Yeah, Utah Department of Health decided to close down the lake today. This is what it looks like right now. You can see how murky it is below. Located in Utah County, Utah Lake is 24 miles long, 12 miles across, spanning nearly 100,000 square acres. It's the third largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. At one time, there were more than 10 recreational resorts surrounding the lake. A showboat with on-deck dancing and a full orchestra was popular in the early 20th century. July 2016 would prove to be a rough and interesting time for Utah Lake as an algal bloom, unprecedented in scale, affected the entire lake. The bloom would quickly become an urgent issue, posing a threat to the health of humans and animals and would require a significant public health response. To better understand the seriousness of the algal bloom situation, it's important to understand what an algal bloom is and why they can be dangerous and harmful. Algae are a very diverse species and live almost everywhere on our planet. They are very important to our aquatic ecosystems. They're the basis of the food chain in, in water systems. They produce roughly 70% of the oxygen that we consume Algae rapidly increase their population in certain conditions when there's um, readily abundant nutrients such as phosphorus, carbon, and nitrogen. Not all algal blooms are harmful. In, in fact, most algal blooms are beneficial. They produce a lot of energy and fuel source for aquatic life. When algae reproduces in its life cycle and becomes into its uh, end of its life cycle, specific algae species can produce toxins. Cyanobacteria is commonly um, linked with toxin, toxic algae, um, otherwise known as harmful algal blooms. Um, depending on the type of species of the algae, the algae bloom can last for several days, and if the algae bloom is in full bloom, it can last for months. When algae blooms are occurring, the pigment coloration of the algae make it easy to detect by the human eye and in some cases when the algae is underneath the surface of the water uh, microscopic technology is used to determine the strength and the amount of algae in the water. I feel as though Utah County Health Department represented the department well in response to the algal bloom. Um, I think that things that could have changed that made have, would have made the response better um, would have been the ability for individuals to easily and readily work more hours than they were ex supposed to work. It seems as though these type of things tend to happen on late in the week when many people have already worked their 40 hours. Um, we have staff that we needed to be in the office that had already gone home and it would be nice to have the ability to get these people back and pay them and compensate them for their overtime. Many people are left in the office working more than their 40 hours and just donating it directly to the emergency response. It would be nice for staff and beneficial for the community to have these people involved all the way through the process and be compensated for their, their efforts. The health department was notified um, by a member of the public, a member of a water ski team that spends a lot of time on the lake to that point in the year, that was not something we were even watching for. The bloom happened much earlier than it normally would. That's part of what made this event unprecedented as far as blooms on Utah Lake go. Once we were notified, uh, there was several staff that were sent to the lake to assess the extent of the bloom and, and what stage it was in. The major action and the responsibilities of the health department in the initial surge over the first few days was first and foremost to get the word out to the public of the potential risks. Um, that closely followed by a massive coordination effort between uh, various state and local entities to ensure that everybody was on the same page to start the process of sampling and determine the size and scope of this bloom that, we're, that we were dealing with. As we started to get a sense of, of the size, then continual coordination for action to be taken and further information out to the public so that uh, public health was protected and um, decisions could be made in a timely fashion.
We started to realize that the lake was going to have to be closed as sample results started to come back. Now this was unprecedented, the closure of the entire 95,000 acre lake. When results came back showing that it was widespread and the numbers well exceeded the 10 million cell per milliliter density that is um, shown in guidance document for closure, that's when our health officer, Ralph Clegg, indicated that he would be willing to uh, post signs and release to the media the need for closure. The factors for considering closure were simple. There weren't a lot of them. It was just the protection of public health for those who come in contact with these algal blooms and the pending dangers that could be involved. We do not know at what point they're producing toxins that will be harmful. So as we received numbers, it was, uh, it was just simply to protect anyone from getting into this water and causing uh, harm or even death. From our initial response, it became quite obvious to me that we need to prepare with more resources to deal with events like this. We need to have in place um, employees dedicated and trained to respond in an event like this. We need to have in place uh, the ability to work uh, overtime and be compensated for that and have resources such as vehicles and equipment at our disposal to be able to respond in a more timely fashion. I felt like that was probably what we lacked the most and uh, then experience, just experiencing the scope of something like this and, and making sure that we covered all of our bases as we have looked back and have tried to learn from that. Uh, there was some better communication that could have happened and, and more coordination. Some severe indicators for this bloom were, first, is that we conducted extensive uh, surveillance by air and also by fan boat on the lake and it was determined that over 90 percent of the lake was impacted by this toxic algal bloom. And then the second issue was um, just the degree of the toxic algae itself. Um, by lab analysis it was determined that um, it was five and a half times the safe level for recreational use as determined by the World Health Organization. You know that this bloom prevented many challenges to the health department and one of those challenges was the sheer size of the lake the fact that there's so much surface area to cover, um, to have adequate staff to be able to go out in a timely manner and to post signage at the public access points and the non-public access points was very challenging. Also, um, communication. Um, be able to get the word out both to the public in a timely and effective manner, uh, to warn them properly because that's our major role is to protect the public, but also internal communication with staff so that they're informed and then can better inform the public. Some of the major lessons learned from this response uh, was communication. Communication is paramount to be effective and that's both internal and also with the public. Um, in addition to that, uh, we learned that you know, having relationships established uh, with the partners that are involved in the event with other agencies, sister agencies, and with those players involved, uh, having rapport and, and relationships that you've developed over time is also an important lesson learned. Um, another thing that we learned was uh, the effective use of Everbridge. Everbridge is an awesome uh, communication tool where text messages and fax messages and updates regarding the status of the lake could be sent out immediately uh, to not just the residents of Utah County, but also to the general public. You know, as I look back at this event and how we responded, uh, some things that I think we would have done differently, probably the thing that comes to mind is uh, you know, regular uh, scheduled briefings of our staff because we really wanted our staff to be professional and comprehensive when they responded to the public's inquiries because we wanted to keep them safe. So if we would have had that set up on a regular basis where those briefings would be given at a regularly scheduled time, I think that would have helped. And when I look back at this response, I am most proud of our staff. They really stepped up. Environmental health scientists are usually working behind the scenes 
conducting their routine work, inspections, sampling, that type of thing. But when you have an event on this large scale, it's very important to show well. And you only show as well as how your staff perform. And I'm very proud of our staff because they stepped up. You know, our regular routine work, uh, we couldn't stop doing that work. We still had to step up our effort and, and complete that work. But also, we had to respond to this large scale event. And they did it without complaint. They worked extra hours in the evenings on the weekends so that we showed well to the public and something that the, I'm very proud of and I hope that the citizens of Utah County are proud of, of our response in that regard. Uh, the Health Department uh, derives its legal authority from Title 26A of the Utah State Code, which is the Local Health Districts Act. It grants the Health Department authority uh, to exist and authority to act in a lot of public health related issues. The process to close Utah Lake uh, first consisted of determining whether or not the health department had authority under Title 26A to close the lake. Reading that, uh, we determined that the health department has the power and authority to close public places as necessary for public health, as well as to exercise physical control over uh, property in order to protect uh, public health. And so uh, upon determining that the health department had authority, we then issued an order from the health department signed by the health director and uh, actually had the state health department enter into that order with us. That order uh, ordered the public to remain clear of the lake until further notice was given and violation of that order would be a class B misdemeanor. Now, legal procedure aside, uh, it's also important that the legal order is enforceable, and so we wanted to make the public aware. We did that through public education, through news media, through media releases, as well as by notifying the local sheriff and uh, police departments of the closure uh, so that they could uh, educate members of the public as to the closure if they encountered members of the public that were using the lake. The county attorney's office has never actually worked with the health department in closing a public facility before. This is the first time that, uh, from our knowledge, that the health department has ever made such a widespread closure. Uh, in previous times, the health department had a procedure that they followed for partial closures, which consisted of signage, uh, but there was no intended enforcement to go along with those closures as they only cover small parts of the lake or smaller facilities. However, in this instance, the health department contacted us to determine whether or not they would have the authority. We determined that they would have the authority and advised the health department as to how to close the lake. Uh, upon closing the lake, uh, we also helped advise the health department as to when it might be advisable to reopen the lake uh, based off of uh, the risk to the public and uh, the gravity of the situation. Looking back at the initial response, uh, it might have helped if the health department had a procedure in place. However, the health department had never uh, encountered a situation like this in the past. And so uh, it was not something that I think that the attorney's office could have helped the health department prepare for in the future, uh, at least from a closure standpoint and an enforcement standpoint, I think that the health department acted uh, in the best way they possibly could. Uh, in the future, I think that we will have learned from this experience and that our reaction might be a little bit quicker. We might be able to react without having to do the same amount of research that we did in the first place. And we'll have some uh, preliminary documents prepared. We could effectuate a closure more quickly However, uh, I don't think that we would do anything differently in the future than we did in this previous instance. The coordination during the algal bloom response at Utah County Health Department really was great. It worked very, very well. We had a really great internal response. We had many, many staff members working together. We had lots of environmental health staff working together. We also had health educators that were working in the response. We had administrators working in the response. We had lots, especially lots of staff from environmental health working, myself from public information. One of the really interesting things is that we were able to have lots of, lots of staff 
stuff that you wouldn't maybe necessarily think would be involved in the, in the response, like health educators, that were really pulling in and we, for instance, we needed to have signs printed. They would print those signs and they would laminate them for us. So really, if we needed something, they were right there to help us get it done. We had um, lots of support staff that were happy to go get people lunch and do things like that really to, to just support us in general. And that was very, very helpful. On a bigger level, the coordination also worked very well, really between many different partners at the local and really the state level. That really worked great. And really the state, really the Department of Environmental Quality really took a lead role in coordinating that response. It worked very well. They really did the coordination for us and we were we were certainly a major player really in the response. Really one of some of the things that they did for us is they would arrange conference calls. In, in the initial days we were actually having two, sometimes three conference calls a day that helped everybody get on the same page and, and you know talk about what we needed to do and just make sure that we're all talking about the same thing and that we all have that same common operating picture. Those conference calls were able to change a little bit. We were able to maybe take them to a daily and sometimes, you know, eventually take them out to maybe weekly or then on an as needed basis. But really in the heat of everything, we were even doing those conference calls on the weekend, over the holiday, but really they were very, very helpful to keep everyone, um, you know, on the same page and up to date. Another thing that was very helpful in the realm of coordination were the updates that were being done. There were different folks that would take on this update role and they would send out an email maybe at the end of the day for Here, here's the update, this is where we're at at this point. That was very helpful. The number of agencies that was involved in the coordination was truly staggering. We were talking probably 15 major, major players in, in the coordination. Everyone was working very well together, but really trying to keep everyone involved because out of those different organizations, you probably had five, six, seven, maybe even 10 individuals and email addresses that everyone was trying to keep track of. So being able to do those updates and keep everyone up to date was, was very helpful. And that state was, the state was able to do that for us on a coordination level. We also were able to coordinate with other states. We even had other states reaching out to us asking, what are you doing? How did you handle this? Because they knew that we had a massive algal bloom um, happening in our state. So we did, we did have um, states reaching out to us like Colorado. They were talking to us about how did you handle this or that. And so that was, that was really interesting. We were able to coordinate them and be a resource for them and help them through some of the issues that they were experiencing. You know, we experienced a lot of challenges during the algal bloom response. One of those challenges was from a communications perspective. One of the things we were able to do was work together as public information officers or PIOs. So we worked together a number of different agencies, probably 15 different agencies, maybe as many as 15 different PIOs, working together on a joint media release. So we would work together in a Google document, which is great. It provides great coordination. We can all work in the same place and see real-time updates. The problem is you have 15 or 20 people working in the same document and people from different organizations with different goals. So you would have one person put something in and another person take that right back out. So that really was, that was a challenge. That was a real struggle for us to be able to get out timely, accurate information when that document is really changing quite quickly. So that was a real challenge. Great tool, but that really was, it, it was a challenge. Another thing that was a real challenge for us was the extreme amount of media attention that this particular response was, was getting. So what we decided to do as agencies working together and PIOs working together is we decided to share essentially that media um, attention. So the Department of Environmental Quality or the state took a lot of, of those media inquiries and then we as the health department at the local level took a lot of the health related inquiries. So we were able to split that burden between the two of us and that helped a lot. Even at that, it really was almost overwhelming, the number of inquiries we got on a daily basis. And we were able to do those, um, we were able to handle those stories and those inquiries doing on-camera interviews. We also had to do a lot of just over the phone updates and interviews on the weekend, all times of the day and night. Along with those interviews come media inquiries um, and, and requests for interviews that are off-site, meaning they wanted to actually come to Utah Lake and go to the harbors. They actually want to see that algal bloom in all of its glory, so to speak. So one, one of the experiences we had is we actually had 
um, the Associated Press contact us and they, they wanted to do an interview at Utah Lake. And so, sure, we did that. So we came with them to Utah Lake. We actually took them to two different harbors and they took a lot of photos and they did some interviews with some of our staff. It was kind of a hard thing for me to ask some of my key staff, our Environmental Health Director Bryce Larson and one of our Bureau Directors over Water Sanitation, uh, Jason Garrett, it was really hard for me to ask them during the heat of the moment to take half a day out of their busy schedules when they're really knee deep in this response to, you know, take half a day and go do this media interview with me. But they did, they happily did it. We went out, we went to two different harbors, American Fork Harbor and Lincoln Beach, about the two, two harbors, about the furthest away you could possibly get on Utah Lake. But we went out, we spent a lot of time with the reporters doing interviews, getting a lot of good photos. We got some great photos of Jason doing some water sampling. And it, it was it was hard, it, it, was, it was a big day. It was kind of a burden on us. But the really great thing for us is that it really paid off and it paid off big time. We got a lot lot of media attention just from that one interview. Actually, the first story that came out of that was from The Guardian, and actually a UK-based publication. So that was something that we, we were able to get that initial publication, um, it came out quite quickly. That initial, um, that initial interview that we did with the AP, we got tons of stories off that. Another thing that we got off of that was NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt actually featured a picture of Jason Garrett doing some water sampling on their Facebook page. And if you looked at the desktop version, you see Bryce Larson looking at the water doing some inspections. So we had our staff on their Facebook page and that just took off. It really went viral quite quickly. And it actually turned out that that story ended up going to the number one trending story on Facebook for over half a day, which is quite a feat in and of itself. That was huge for us. We had um, a huge media day on July 22nd. Our, our biggest media day, we had well over 330 news stories that the health department was quoted in or mentioned in. Those were just news stories. That didn't even include social media. Really a huge day for us. One of the additional challenges that we also experienced during the bloom was that we had additional response needs come up while we were already responding to the algal bloom. Some of those issues were Zika and a pregnant woman that, that really got a lot of media attention, again, while the bloom's already happening. We also had a hantavirus death, which as you know, is, is really pretty rare. Also got a lot of media attention. We also had several rabid bats and we needed to really communicate to the public that yes, we are getting positive rabid bats. Please stay away from them, be, be careful with them. Um, again, a lot of media attention there. The last thing that we got that really, um, that really did make things pretty interesting for us is we had multiple cases of viral meningitis at the same school. And that was the week that school was starting. So that actually, that also got a lot of media attention. And again, this is all concurrent while the bloom is happening. All four of these items really required pretty intense PIO and communication support. And again, concurrent with the algal bloom. So that also was a challenge. The last challenge that we experienced that really sticks out in my mind really is just the sheer amount of time that was required from the key staff, you know, responding to this algal bloom. I remember being at the office late at night, several nights. We didn't leave till after eight or nine at night. I also remember several evenings when I was coordinating with our environmental health director via text and email well past midnight. Truly, some of our staff, it was just being overwhelmed with calls, even though we had already activated poison control. We were trying to get the public to call poison control, really take that burden off of local agencies. We were still being inundated with calls. That, that was a real challenge. And again, on top of our day-to-day -day work. And additionally, we also needed to keep our staff up to date. We want to make sure they're giving out accurate and timely information. And it really was important that we're able to keep them up to date with the most accurate information for them to deliver to the public. Some of the lessons learned from dealing with the algal bloom response are things like making sure that we're updating our internal staff on a regular basis so that they can provide good quality and up-to-date information to the general public as they are calling and making inquiries to our department. Another thing that we want to do is to make sure that we're updating all of our staff, all health department staff. We should also be providing updates to our Board of Health and to our county commissioners. Another lesson learned is that we should really identify very early on a staff person that can serve in a coordination role for our internal team, providing situation updates to, to the entire team to keep us all on the same page and make sure it'd be ideal that that person doesn't have hourly job restrictions with, with their job.
You know, looking back at that initial response, I think the main thing that I would do differently and really how I would prepare differently is I would have trained backups. I do have backups, but I, I think I would train them differently, a little bit more thoroughly, and I would actually use them. I didn't call any backups in to help me in a public information role during this response. I was probably too way, you know, really knee deep in this response. I never really called anyone in for help. I should have, and I should have been thinking about that from day one, and I should have been training them to do that, and I should have, I, sh I really should have had help for that because we were working so many hours for so many days, about 10 or 12 days into this after working straight a lot of staff start to get exhausted really burned out so a lot of those key staff not just myself need to have trained backups that are ready to roll to step in and support and really take over so that we don't have single points of failure so training and really utilizing that training is a key takeaway for me the algo bloom response in utah county uh, was a good example of public health in action in that uh, the potential problem was brought to our attention by the public, who are our eyes and ears of public health, as we can't have employees everywhere. And after they brought that to our attention, uh, with the realization that they could bring it to our attention, we then began to assess the situation, which is our responsibility, to see what kind of problem there was, how serious it was, the extent of the problem. Following that assessment, as we worked with our partners and the stakeholders in the lake, we were then able to determine the proper action to be taken to protect the public's health. And in taking that action, then we could quickly and clearly communicate what actions we were taking to the public, what actions they should take, help them to understand the seriousness of the situation and the concerns that uh, they could have in their lives if they were exposed to the, the, the harmful algae blooms. After that, uh, then we were able to uh, uh, continue to monitor the situation, assess how it was going, and then communicate to the public as well uh, what the current status of the, of the situation was so that they could make determinations as to what activities they may want to have. The cost of the algal bloom response here for the Utah County Health Department ran between $55,000 and $60,000. Now that uh, included the time for the, the staff to go out and take samples, the communications we had to have with our stakeholders, the opportunities we had to meet and discuss the situation and assess the situation and determine the appropriate actions, as well as the time it took to communicate those actions with the public through the media. And so all of that staff time and the associated benefits that the staff have and the transportation costs for sampling, uh, along with the support costs and overhead costs go into coming up with that figure. In addition, the Department of Environmental Quality and some of our other stakeholders, such as the Department of Health, State Department of Health, had costs that were associated with this that would be in addition to that. For example, the Department of Environmental Quality had the cost for all the sampling, which was very expensive sampling, and so they had uh, additional costs above and beyond what the Utah County Health Department had. Uh, this particular algal bloom response uh, has helped us as, as we prepare for the future because now we uh, know many of the stakeholders that are involved in, in, in the lake and, and have an interest in, in the water of the lake and what's taking place in the lake. And so we have a relationship with all of these stakeholders now. Uh, we've also been able to help the stakeholders better understand the situation and the problem and why it is a problem. And so they have a better understanding of that as well now as we work together. And so we've learned how to best work with them and communicate with our stakeholders in a way that works and is helpful for them. We've also been able to identify the best sampling locations uh, with the proper sampling techniques for our staff to protect themselves uh, from any exposures as well as they're picking up those samples. And uh, we've learned that uh, this can take place earlier in the season than we previously thought, and so we know we need to be better prepared earlier in the season. And then we've learned as well the best places to post the signage to uh, warn the public about, about some of the issues. You know, we're very proud of the ability that our staff showed in working with multiple agencies. Sometimes it's very hard to bring multiple agencies together and come to coalesce on, on the course of action. But we were able to, they were, our staff was able to quickly assess the situation, and once the situa situation was assessed, to make the determinations which we needed to make to uh, protect the public, and then to send out notifications to the media and post the necessary signs. It was really a 
proud of the, a very hard-working staff who took their responsibilities to protect the health of the citizens of Utah County seriously and were able to go the extra mile. I don't know that we would have done anything differently than, than the way we, we did it. It seemed to be the way that needed to be do, done. We would have prepared it a little differently because we would have uh, uh, known that perhaps this could be more extensive than it had been in the past and not just a little bit more extensive but extremely more extensive uh, covering the lake and the uh, and the river going out of the lake as well and uh, you know we could have prepared a little sooner in the year for how extensive it would be and for the high levels and and be able to get the warnings out a little bit quicker that uh, is probably the thing that we, we one of the things we learned from this of how we can better prepare that we know now that we you know, we hadn't suspected from before because it, all the blooms before were minor and later in the season. In addition to a large study begun in 2016 by Utah Department of Environmental Quality, the Utah County Health Department and partners will continue to monitor Utah Lake and further its preparedness and response efforts.